If you've been shopping in stores lately for household cleaning chemicals and supplies, you realize how expensive these materials and equipment have become. In the professional janitorial industry, things aren't any different. Chemicals cost a lot of money. Equipment and supplies also cost a lot of money. Of course, these supplies are necessary, but there are some things you can do to help reduce waste and associated cost of these materials. It's your responsibility to properly store, use, handle, and maintain cleaning supplies and equipment. That's what this program is all about, taking care of your equipment and to use the appropriate materials for the job. And of course, to reduce the waste, loss, and damage. The first rule of thumb is to keep a running inventory of what supplies and equipment you have. And when you start running out of anything, notify your supervisor. If you maintain a good inventory system, you won't be overstocked, nor will you be understocked. You'll have the supplies necessary to perform your job. The next step is to use the materials properly. This means to use the materials according to the company's rules and don't overuse anything. As an example, if cleaning instructions call for using one teaspoon of chemical per 10 parts of water, then use only one teaspoon with 10 parts of water. Using more of the chemical than is required is a big waste, and it may be causing more harm than good. The chemical manufacturer puts a lot of time, effort, and money into formulating their chemicals. They know and understand what's needed to make the formula work the best. Don't try to be chemical engineers and use more than is prescribed in your cleaning procedures or the instructions listed on the chemical label. You're just throwing away the excess chemical when it's not necessary. The reason we're making such a big point about this is because it happens so frequently. We all do it in our homes. We use too much because we think more is better when the real truth is you should use only the amount prescribed in the instructions. The next step is to keep your supply and storage areas clean, neat, and organized. Professional custodians and janitors do a great job in their regular duties but when it comes to keeping your own janitorial area clean, it sometimes falls below accepted standards. There are reasons for that. Usually these areas are quite small, get a lot of use, and they're usually kept locked so no one sees them. Regardless of the reasons, they should be properly maintained and kept in a neat and orderly manner. Sloppy storage results in lost supplies, damaged supplies, and equipment, and certainly, they can become health and safety hazards. We'll talk a bit more about safety as we go along, but let's mention one item in particular, oily rag storage. Without going into a lot of detail, oily rags are fire hazards. If they're stored improperly, oily rags can start fires. It's called spontaneous combustion. Oily rags must be stored in a metal container with a metal lid that's closed. Follow your organization's policies and procedures when storing anything, particularly chemicals, rags, and other supplies. Okay, let's quickly review some equipment tips. You may or may not use all the equipment mentioned here, but it's still good advice. Let's begin with spray bottles, simple but effective tools, and they need your attention. First of all, label the bottle so everybody knows what's in it. It may look like window cleaner, but how do you know if it's not labeled? You may know it's window cleaner, but someone else may use your spray bottle and think it's something else. Label your containers and never store toxic chemicals, solvents, or flammable chemicals in spray bottles. Keep your spray bottle clean. It's a good idea to take it apart and clean it frequently. Because the residue can build up on the inside and clog the spraying mechanism. How about those different types of brushes you use for different jobs. These should be cleaned frequently. Rinse brushes out in cold water and then shake out the excess water before you store them. If the brush is dirty, wash it out in lukewarm cleaning solution and then rinse. When the brush is drying, keep the bristles straight. You may have to comb out the embedded tangles and debris, but never bang the wooden part of the handle or frame against anything. Wood can break and the brushes are quite expensive to replace. When you're storing brushes, hang up the brushes. Don't put any weight on the bristles. This can warp floor brushes. 
and warped floor brushes can cause vibration, missed spots, overall cause you a whole lot of misery. Clean brushes after each use and handle them carefully. Protect those valuable brushes. If they're going to be stored for a long time, use mothballs or insecticides to keep the bugs out of the bristles. Brooms also need care. Don't store wet brooms. The moisture will soften the straw and cause it to lose shape. If you need a wet broom, use a plastic broom. Never stand a broom on its bristles. Try to store brooms and brushes in an area with good ventilation. How about those handy dust mops? Never use a dry dust mop to pick up liquids. And don't use dust mops on oily floor surfaces. Clean your mop frequently. A vacuum cleaner is the best for this job. When you shake a dust mop, where's all that dust going? Get a clean head, particularly in environmentally sensitive areas. Don't store mops on the floor or with the mop head leaning against a wall. Hang it up so air can circulate and dry the head. If your mop head has been treated with oil or petroleum-based products, store the head in a metal container with a tight-fitting lid. Remember, it's the same thing as an oily rag and can be a fire hazard. Wet mops need attention as well. When first using a new mop head, soak it in water for several minutes to remove sizing and toughen the mop fibers. Replace worn mop heads. You can use the old head to mop up oily dirt or dirtier areas. Remember, mop heads do wear out, especially if you allow them to remain in the cleaning solution. Cleaning solutions are usually caustic or damaging to the mop heads because the strands will rot or sour. After using mop heads, wash them in warm water with a detergent disinfectant and rinse them with hot water. The final rinse should be in cold water. When you're wringing out mops, don't twist the mop or squeeze too hard. Quite frequently, the strands get tangled but don't use your hands or fingers to untangle mop strands. Use a piece of wood, pencil, or something else. You never can tell what's in the mop, such as a piece of glass or other sharp objects. Think about safety all the time. If you're using chemicals, you certainly don't want to expose your hands or skin to harsh chemicals, so use rubber gloves. You're beginning to see how simple everyday items need your attention, care, and maintenance. How many mop heads are in use every day? Tens of thousands? Hundreds of thousands? Think about all the damage, waste, and misuse that's occurring just on mop heads. That adds up to a lot of dinero. So do your part and make the effort to maintain your equipment properly and to work and act safely on every job. Let's now discuss buckets and ringers. Be sure the ringer is the proper size for the mop. Never extend the handle on the ringer, as this can easily break the equipment. Use only the handle provided. Avoid the use of any acid in metal pails, as acid will rust the metal. It's important to follow your company's procedures on what type of chemicals can be used on specific surfaces and containers. Acid-based chemicals may be okay for plastic containers, but not for metal containers. Some chemicals may damage plastic containers. Keep the ringer and container in good condition. Ringer parts should be kept oiled and tight. When you're not using the ringer, keep it in the release or open position. If the rollers or casters are defective, report the defect to your supervisor. Okay, now let's discuss powered equipment, such as vacuum cleaners, buffers, polishers, and other machines. Just like any other equipment, it needs to be kept clean and properly serviced. Always follow the equipment manufacturer's recommendations for operation and maintenance. Inspect the equipment daily before you use it, such as its condition and maintenance status. Inspect electrical cables, cords, plugs, and other electrical parts. If you ever have an electrical tool or appliance shock you, even a slight tingle, it's time to unplug the equipment and don't use it until it's been repaired or replaced. Most industrial polishers and buffers require a third prong on the electrical plug. This third prong is your safety device. In the event of a malfunction or electrical short, this third prong will carry the electricity through this prong to ground and not through your body. If this prong is broken off, the electricity has to go to the source with least resistance, which is your body. Don't take chances with electrical equipment, it's too dangerous. 
On small vacuum cleaners, you need to look at the manufacturer's identification plate to determine if the vacuum cleaner is double insulated. This means there's an insulation inside the machine that will protect you from shock in the event of a malfunction or electrical short. If it says double insulated, then you only need a two-prong electrical plug. If it's not double insulated, then the third prong on the plug is mandatory. When working with chemicals, use only those chemicals provided by your employer. Follow the instructions on the label and use only the amount called for in the instructions or job requirements. Don't experiment. You're not chemical engineers or scientists, so follow your company's procedures and the manufacturer's instructions. Be extremely careful when mixing anything with ammonia or other potentially toxic chemicals. If you mix a chlorine-based product, such as a cleaner, with ammonia, you can form a deadly gas called chloramine. Deadly? Because one whiff of chloramine can kill you. So don't experiment. Don't use more chemical than is called for on the label. And certainly, don't mix chemicals unless you've been trained and authorized by the company. When required, wear the appropriate protective equipment, safety glasses, rubber gloves, face shields, and other protective equipment. If you need protective equipment, ask your supervisor. If it's provided, it's your responsibility to wear it. All chemicals must be labeled so you and everyone else knows what's in the container. Keep lids on chemicals and use proper storage procedures. Store toxic chemicals on lower shelves and never store flammables in anything except approved containers and cabinets. Follow the rules when working with chemicals. Care and maintenance of your equipment is critical. The equipment will give you many years of service if you just take care of it. Misuse, damage, and just plain lack of maintenance are the key reasons most equipment fails before its normal life cycle. It's expensive to replace, and certainly defective equipment is a hazard to you and your co-workers. Take care of your equipment. It's the only professional way to do business. Thank you.